Mogadishu, Mogadishu or Hamar Somali pronunciation. In Italian, Mogadizio. Locally known as Hamar or Hamar is the capital city and most popular city of Somalia. The city has served an, as an important port connecting with traders all around the Indian Ocean for millennia and has an estimated population of 2,388,000 in 1921. Mogadishu is located in the coastal Banadir region of the Indian Ocean, which unlike the other Somali region, is considered a municipal rather than a Mamul Gobolet federal state. Mogadishu has a long history which ranges from the ancient period up until the present, serving as the capital of the influential Sultanate of Makadisio in the 9th to 13th century, with for many centuries controlled the Indian Ocean gold trade and eventually came under the Ayuran Empire in the 13th century which was an important player in the medieval Silk Road maritime trade. Mogadishu enjoyed the height of its prosperity during the 14th and 15th centuries and was during the early modern period considered the wealthiest city of the East African coast, as well as the center of a trimming textile industry. In the 17th century, Mogadishu and part of southern Somalia fell under the Hirab Inama Mate, and the 19th century came under the Jaledi Sultanate's sphere of influence. The onset of Italian colonialism occurred in incremental stage, with Italian treaties signed in the 1880s, followed by economic engagement between various Somali clans, including the rare Matan and clans like rare Hamar and the Italian Benadir Company, and the direct cover governance by the Italian government after 1906 and the British military administration of Somalia after World War II and the UN Italian Trust territory in the 1950. This was followed by independence in 1960. The Hantiwada Socialist era during Boris presidency 1969-1991, a three decade civil war after war and as of the late 2010s and 2020 period of reconstruction. The origins of the name Mogadiccio, Mogadiccio, has many theories but it is most likely derived from a morphology of the Somali words Mug and Disho, which literally means Sight, killer, or blinder, possibly referring to the city's blinding beauty. Other theories suggest the Persian word Makat i Shah, which means the seat of the Shah. And another theory is that it is derived from the Arabic root Makhdus, which means. Hallowed place, but the place is far too ascent. The 16th century explorer Leo Africanus knew the city as Magadaso, Magadoho. Tradition and all records assert that southern Somalia 
including the Mogadishu area, was inhabited very early by hunter gatherers. Although most of these early inhabitants are believed to have been either overwhelmed, driven away, or in some cases assimilated by later migrants to the area, physical traces of their occupation survive in certain ethnic minority groups inhabiting modern-day Jubaland and other parts of the south. The latter descendants include relict populations such as the Eile, Awer, the Wa Ribi, and especially Wa Boni. By the time of the arrival of peoples from the Kushitic Rahanwain clan confederacy, who will go on establish a local aristocracy, other Kustiki groups affiliated with the Oromo, Wardai, and Ahuran had already former settlements of their own in the sub-region. The accent city of Sarpion is believed to have been the predecessor state of Mogadishu. It is mentioned in the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, a Greek travel document dating from the 1st century AD, as one of a series of commercial ports of the Somali littoral. According to the Periplus, maritime trade already connected peoples in the Mogadishu area with other communities along the Indian Ocean. During ancient times, Mogadishu was part of the Somali city-state that engaged in a lucrative trade network connecting Somali merchant with Phoenicia, Ptolemaic Egypt, Greece, Parthian Persia, Sabaeans, Nabataea, and the Roman Empire. Somali sailors used the ancient Somali maritime vessel known as the Beden to transport their cargo. The founding ethnicity of Mogadishu and its subsequent sultana sultanate has been a topic of serious intrigue in Somali studies. I am Lewis believed that the city was founded and ruled by a council of Arab and Persian families. However, the reference I am Lewis received traces back to one 19th century text called the Kitak al Sunui, which has been discredited by modern scholars and unreliable and and historical. More importantly, it contradicts oral, ancient written sources, and archaeological evidence of the pre-existing pre civilizations and communities that flourished of the Somali coast, and the which were the forefathers of Mogadishu and the other coastal cities. Thus, the Persian and Arab founding myths are regarded as outdated false colonialist reflection of Africans ability to create their own sophisticated states. It has now been widely accepted that where were already existing communities on the Somali coast with the local African leadership to whom the Arab and Persian families had to ask to permission to settle in their cities. It also seems the local Africans managed to retain their political and numerical superiority of the cause while the Muslim immigrants will go through an assimilation process by adopting the local language and culture. Mogadishu, along the, with Sale and other Somali coastal cities, was founded upon an indigenous network involving hinterland trade and that's happening even before significant Arab migrations or trade 
with the Somali coast. That goes back approximately 4,000 years and are supported by archaeological and textual evidences. This is corroborated by the 1st century AD Greek document, the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, the Tylen Multiple Prosperous Poor Cities, and ancient Somalia, as well as the identification of ancient Sarapium with a city that will later be known as Mogadishu. When Ibn Battuta beside the Sultanate in 14th century, he identified the Sultan as vain of Barbara origin, an ancient term to describe the ancestors of the Somali people. According to Ross E. Doom, neither Mogadishu or any other city of the coast could be considered alien and clubs of Arabs or Persians, but were in fact African towns. Jokut al Hamawi, a famous Muslim medieval geographer, in the year 1220 describes Mogadishu as the most prominent town on the off on the coast. Yahud also mentioned Mogadishu as many town inhabited by by Berbers described as a dark skinned and considered ancestors of modern Somalis. By the 13th century, Ibn Said described Mogadishu, Marka, and Barawa, located in the Menadir coast, had become Islamic and commercial centers in the Indian region. He said the local people in the Benadir coast and the interior were predominantly inhabited by Somalis with a, minor a minority of Arab, Persian and Indian merchants living in the coastal towns. Ibn al muhawir mentions the Manu Majid who fled the Mundridia region in Yemen in the year 11 59 and settled in Mogadishu also and also traders from the port towns of Abian and Haram. Mogadishu is traditionally inhabited by four main rare Hamar, Gibil, Madog. Clan groupings. These are the Morse is the Harba Wayne and the Banda Wo, and with the Morshe being regarded as the oldest group of in Mogadishu, and is considered to be a sub clan of Ayuran, who established one of the most powerful medieval kingdom in Africa called Ajuran Sultanate. The Gibil Mado faction of the Benadiri are said to hail from various Somali clan groups for the interior and from the north and make up the majority of Bernadiris with the small minority being Gibil Cubs with descent from Muslim immigrants. The Mogadishu Sultanate was a medieval Somali Sultanate centered in southern Somalia. It rose as one of the preeminent powers in the Horn of Africa under the rule of Fakhr al Din before becoming part of the expanding Ahuram Empire in the 13th century. The Mogadishu Sultanate maintained a vast trading network, dominated the regional gold trade, minted its own currency, and left an extensive architectural legacy in present-day South Somalia. A local city-state with much influence over the hinterland neighboring coastal towns. For many years, Mogadishu functioned as the preeminent city in the Bilad al-Barbar, land of the Berbers. 
as medieval Arabic speakers naming the Somali coast. Following his visit to the city, the 12th century Syrian historian Yahud al Hamawi, a former Slav of Greek origin, wrote a global history of many places he visited. Mogadishu on college in the richest and most powerful city in the region and was an Islamic center across the Indian Ocean. In the early 13th century, Mogadishu along with other coastal and interior Somali cities in southern Somalia and eastern Abyssinia came under the Yuran Sultanate control and experienced another golden age. By the 5000s, Mogadishu was no longer a vassal state and became a full fledged Ajuran city. An Ajuran family, Budafar, established a dynasty in the city, thus combining two entities together for the next 350 years. The fortunes of the urban cities in the interior and coast became the fortunes of the other. During his travels, Ibn Said al Mahribi 1230-1286 noted that Mogadishu city has already become the leading Islamic center in the region. By the time of the Moroccan traveler Ibn Matuta, appearance of the Somali coast in 13. 31. The city was at the zenith of its prosperity. He described Mogadishu as an astoundingly large city, with many rich merchants, which was famous for its high quality fabric that exported to Egypt, among other places. He also describes the hospitality of the people of Mogadishu and how locals would put travelers up in their home to help the local economy. Batuta added that the city was ruled by a Somali Sultan Abu Bakr ibn Sa'ih Umar. He noted the Sultan Abu Bakr had dark skin, complexion and spoke in his native tongue, Somali, but was also fluent in Arabic. The Sultan also has a retinue of Wathirs, ministers, legal experts, commanders, royal eunuchs, and others officials at his back and hall. Ibn Khaldun 1332-146 noted in his book that Mogadishu was a massive metropolis. He also claimed that the city was a very populous with many wealthy merchants. This period gave birth to notable figures like Ab al Aziz of Mogadishu, who was described as the governor and Islam chef or Maldives by Ibn Battuta. After him, is named the Abdul Aziz Mosque in Mogadishu, which has remained there for centuries. The island's appellation Madagascar is not of local origin, but rather was a popular state in the Middle Ages by Europeans. The name Madagascar was first recorded in the memories of 13th century Veter Venetian explorer Marco Polo as a corrupted transliteration of the name Mogadishu, the famous port with which Polo had confused the island. Vasco da Gama, who passed by Mogadishu in the 15th century, noted that it was a large city with houses of four or five stories high and big palaces in its, in its center and many mosques with cylindrical miranets. In the 16th century, Duarte Barbosa noted that many ships from the kingdom of Cambaya sailed to Mogadishu with clothes and species for which they in return received gold 
wax and ivory. Barbosa also highlighted the abundance of meat, wet, barley, horses and fruit on the coastal markets, which generated enormous wealth for the merchants. Mocadicio, the center of the tribune wearing industry known as Tob Ben Adir, specialized for the markets in Egypt and Syria, together with Merca and Barawa, also served as transit stop for Swahili merchants for Mombasa and Malindi, and for the gold trade for Kilwa. Yewis merchants for the Hormuz also brought their Indian textile and fruit to the Somali coast in exchange for grain and wood. The Portuguese Empire was unsuccessful of conquering Mogadishu permanently despite the city being destroyed by a powerful naval Portuguese commander called Uai de Sepúlveda. After the battle of the Benadir and peace treaty was signed. According to the 16th century explorer Leo Africanus indicates that the native inhabitants of the Mogadishu polity were of the same origins as the denizens of the naughty people of Zela, the capital of Adal Sultanate. They were generally tall with an olive skin com complexion with some big darker. They all wear traditional rich white silk wrapped around the bodies and have Islamic turbans and Quastad people wore only wear sarongs and brought Arabic as a lingua franca. They were poorly considered of traditional Somali weapons such as swords, daggers, spears, butted axe and bones. Also, they received assistance for its close. All the Ottoman Empire and with the import of firearms such as muskets and cannons. Most were Muslims, although a few hundred to heathen Bedouin tradition. There were also a number of Abyssinian Christian forces in inland. Mogadishu in itself was a wealthy and well will city state with maintained commercial trade with kingdoms across the world. The metropolis city was surrounded by walled stone fortifications. A Sultanate collapses in the 17th century due to the heavy taxes against the subject with opening a rebellion. The subjects became a new wave of Somali immigrants. The Apal moved both into Sawele, Basin, and into Bogadisio, and the city's Mudafar dynasty collapsed. A new political elite led by Abal Jacob Imans, with ties to the new leaders in the interior, moved into Sigani quarter of the city. Remnants of the Ajuran lived in the other key quarter, Hamarwene. Ajuran mercants began to look for new linkages and regional trade opportunities signed the Abgal have commanded the siding trading networks. By the 17th century, the head up Imana Imamate was a powerful kingdom that ruled the large parts of southern and central Somalia. It successfully revolted against the Ahuran Sultanate and established an independent rule for at least two centuries from the 1700s and onwards. The alliance involved the army leaders an advisor of the Habar Gidir and Dudouble, a Fiqi Qadi of Sheikh 
Hall, and the Iman was reserved for the Abhal, who is believed to have been the firstborn. Once established, the Imamate ruled the territories from the Shabayale Valley, the Benadir province, the Mareh area, all the way to the arid lands of Mudu, which included the ancient port of Hobio. Hobio served as a prosperous commercial center for the Imamate, while Mogadishu served as the political center where the ruling dynasty resided. The agricultural center of El de Her and Harad Here included the production of sorghum and beans, supplementing with the herds of camels, cattle, goats, and sheep, livestock, hides, and skin, whilst the aromatic boots and racing were the primary sport and rice. Other foodstuffs and clothes were imported. Merchants looking for exotic goods came to the Imamate to buy textiles, increasing importance and the rapid settlements of more southern cities such as Mogadishu further boosted prosperity and more and more ships made their way down the Somali coast to trade and replenish their surplus. By the late 19th century, the Mamate began the decline to the internal problems. The Mamate also faces challenges for imperialist kingdoms. The third Sansibari Sultan from the coast of Heledi Sultanate and Hobyo Sultanate from the interior from both directions. The Sultanate of Heledi and the Omani Empire viet over who would be the superior power on the Benadir coast, with Sultan Yusuf Mohammed ultimately being the dominant force with the Omanis having a nominal presence and Said bin Sultan even paying tribute to him in order to keep Omani representatives in Mogadishu. Mogadishu under Abqal control had been in a period of decline and the, the Sarai near the end of the Hirab in Mamate, following and a struggle between the two leading figures of each respective quarter, Chingani and Hamarwain. Hamarwain. Sultan Yusuf marched into the city with 8,000 strong army and ruled in favor of the Chingani leader, with the loser fleeing the city. Yusuf will dominate a relative of the deposit chief to let the Hammerwain quarter ending the dispute. Sultan Yusuf is even referred to as a governor of Mogadishu in some sources, highlighting the power he asserted over the city. Despite the Herab political decline, trade with Geledi Sultanate flourished during Jolani Sultan Ahmed Yusuf reign. British explorer John Kirk visited the region in 1873 and noted an variety of things. Rockley, 20 large homes were locked, docked in both Mogadishu and Merca, respectively, filed with grain producers for the farms of the Yaladi in the interior. Kirk met the Hirab Imam Mahmoud, who reigned over Mogadishu. The Sabele River itself was referred to as Heledi River by Kirk. Perhaps in respect 
or the share volume of the produce that the sultanate output. In Barawa, there was little grain, instead a large quantity of ivory and skin which has which had already been loaded onto ships destined for Zanzibar. The Hamadi sultans were at the height of their power. They dominate the East African ivory trade and also held a way over the Juba and Sebele valleys in the hinterland. The Omani Sultan's authority in Mogadishu, however, was largely nominal, citing by name, existing by name only. When Iman Azam bin Qais of Oman sought to build a fort in the city, he was too obligated to write his permission for Sultan Ahmed Yusuf, the royal power broker, who is to convince the Hira Ab Iman to acquiesce to the decision. Omani and later Sansibari officers were their respectable duties of the Sultan to color customs and edit the fort for their own security rather than control of the city. This fort of Garaza was eventually constructed in 1870. The Sultan of Zanzibar later leased and then sold the infrastructure that he had built to the Italians but not the land itself, which was Somali ornament.